Hello from DigiCool Things. I always seem to be frustrated with poor quality breadboards bought from random eBay sellers. So I was intrigued when Brian Locke in one of his videos mentioned the Robodyne transparent breadboards were pretty good quality. So here's the transparent board on the Robodyne official store on ALI Express. As you can see, you can pick them up for just 99 cents each. I much prefer a white bread board, so I was pleased to find they had also had a white bread board for 75 cents. The question is, is this the same quality as the transparent one? So to find out, I ordered a couple of each, and here they are. As you can see, the packaging is identical, so you could assume they came from the same factory. I'll just turn them around so you can see the labels are the same as well. Opening them up and putting them side by side, at first glance, they look as though they may be the same. But if I rotate them round to how they would join end to end, you can actually see that the markings on them are opposite. Um, the bus bars are the opposite polarity and the A to J markings are reversed. So this makes them incompatible in terms of connecting them together. And there's the first indication that they're probably not from the same factory after all. But how does the quality compare? The first thing I noticed is the whiteboard is quite bowed. In fact, I can rock it backwards and forward on my bench, whereas the transparent one is perfectly flat. It appears the transparent one is a rigid plastic, whereas the white one is perhaps quite soft. You can actually see some internal cracks in the transparent breadboard, which confirms that it is a probably a more brittle, rigid plastic. If I use the flat edge of a metal ruler, you can see just how bad the bowing on the white breadboard is. Unlike the transparent breadboard, which in fact is perfectly flat. Here's a close-up of the transparent board, and you can actually see the internal cracks um, in each of the corners. These don't seem to cause a problem though, and I tell you, I definitely prefer a nice flat breadboard. So next, let's pull out the contact strip so we can compare the quality of the contacts. I'll zoom in so we can get a closer look. Actually, let's zoom right in. Here we can see the white breadboard on the right actually has much bigger funneling than the contacts on the transparent board on the left. So that would suggest that the white breadboard's contacts would be a lot looser, especially with thin component leads. So let's see how they compare in actual use. Okay, so here I have my ESP32 module uh, with regular pin headers attached and I have a typical through-hole component, a little capacitor with thin wires. With the bigger funneling on the white breadboard, if I put the component in, it actually goes in very easy and doesn't grip the wires all that well, but it's probably fine. Using the transparent board, pushing the component in is quite firm, so you get a lot of confidence that it's going to make a good connection all the time. The problem comes with my module with dip headers. If I try and push that into the transparent breadboard, put a lot of weight on it, it's very difficult. In fact, I haven't even got it to, to go in. Um, I'd need to put extra, extra weight on it, and of course it would be very difficult to remove it. I'd need a screwdriver or something to wedge it back out. Um, with the white breadboard, uh, let's see, if I position it on, I can just push that down quite easily and slide it in all the way. So pros and cons. Um, the smaller funneling on the transparent board obviously grips smaller component legs better, but could be difficult putting in the dip headers, parallel dip headers, but I guess they will loosen over time. Um, conversely, you can mount your 
to pet a module quite easily on the whiteboard, but um, if the component wires are not held as firmly with your three hole components, um, I don't know. I think I probably prefer the tighter grip of the transparent board and just hope that over time it'll be easier to insert the modules with the pedders. Okay, so after all my rambling, here's a summary of my findings. For me, the transparent one is the winner. Perfectly flat, a tighter grip on the component leads. And the white one? Well, I really just can't get over how bowed it is. That's it. Thanks for watching.